All right, guys, we're back at it again. And today we have a client that I cut a year ago. This is an old file that I found. He was rocking a unique style. It's been quite a while that he combed his hair, as you can see. But it's okay because at that time, I wasn't combing my hair much at all. <laughs> All right, first things first, we gotta grab the shears and the pick. Now, I don't really think I should have grabbed the shears with the pick, but I have them with me. I'm kind of fluffing the hair out. I'm not completely picking it out because he still wants to rock the twisted look, but he did want to take length off, and that's why I kind of had to stretch the hair out a little bit to make sure that I wasn't gonna cut too much. I highly recommend doing it that way. When I used to have long hair, that's what you know Bay used to you know show me, you know, because I didn't know how to really treat my hair. It was a it was a mess. But I used that technique, and because I also did it, it was a good way of setting a foundation for the taper, the high tapers that I'm gonna do for this haircut, right? And that's why I'm setting up these uh, ball guidelines because we're gonna get it going. But remember, do style the hair when it comes to this type of look first. Because if you go ahead and fade the hair and then style it, you're gonna see certain points of the haircut that don't look exactly how you wanted it to look because you waited till the end to style it. I highly, highly, highly recommend doing that, all right? Just listen to your boy on this one. I'm just telling you, it's gonna be a good look. And after that, we're gonna grab the one and a half guard and keep the bokeh from there. I start with the one and a half open, then I close it, and after that, I continue it with the one. And so, well, not on this, not on this video. See, this is a year ago, guys. I went straight for the blade open, and from there, this is where it gets weird. I don't even use the wall clippers anymore. The moment I got my hands on the gammas, the fact that it got the little clicky thing going on, it's a great way of knowing where I am with the lever. Uh, it's a lazy way, but it's so accurate. I love it. Uh, but anyways, after I used or went through the fade process with the lever all the way open to close, I grabbed the one and now I'm at the half. And typically when it comes to the half guard, my go-to is straight to halfway on the lever. I never just go open or closed. And there's a huge explanation, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. I just go straight to halfway. Follow me on this one, I'm telling you. I don't know if you're noticing on this video, the quality is way, way different than the last few videos that I've been posting. This is when I was still using my mirrorless camera, my Canon cameras, the higher quality lenses, the nifty 50, and it's a little bit more difficult. I was actually doing a live last night uh, on the 245 Academy, and there was a point in the conversation where we were talking about equipment and what it takes to you know, do these videos when when you're in the shop and it was actually an interesting conversation make sure you go on the 245 academy if you're interested in checking it out but anyways it was more so what it takes to record and how difficult it may be to be able to do these services while recording and still stay within that time slot and be able to get to your next client and that's important guys being able to set these systems in place i've been doing this now for like two years as far as the tutorials are concerned and actually longer than that but the biggest thing is finding that system and it's so important for you guys to, to find that whether it be with a mirrorless camera a DSLR a cell phone which I highly recommend the cell phone so much easier but you want to find your system make sure you work on that for all the barbers that are watching my videos and watching all the other barber tutorials on YouTube or any other platform find your system get a little uncomfortable make time to figure out how you can show others how you cut hair or whether it be just barbers or clients just letting people know how you do your thing it's important it's uncomfortable it may suck but i highly highly recommend doing it right now we're debulking the front hairline. Not too much, I'm not a fan. Oh my God, I'm not a fan of those hairlines that are so low that you can literally see the separation between that section that you're trying to line up and everything else. He's not getting his hair braided, guys. It does not have to be super low to where it looks like a freaking Omarion, OG Omarion, ba bomb 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 hairline, all right? We don't need all that right now. We just need to debulk it just a little bit. Make sure though, make sure that you have that comb 
at hand. I feel like sometimes I myself even get a little lazy. Like I don't wanna, I don't wanna use my other hand to comb and then line up. Make sure you have that comb with you guys. Make sure that you keep combing the hair down, because, especially with curly hair. Let me tell you, curly hair, it'll sneak up on you. Besides that, let's get into this beard real quick. All right, so this beard work, we're lining it up. Not exactly beneath the jawline, because I don't want my man to look like he got a, you know, a double chin or anything. I'm not saying you got a double chin. I'm just saying that I got a double chin and it hurts. All right, so we're gonna make sure you don't go through what I go through, all right, with the double chin, all right? So we're gonna do it right beneath where the potential double chin might be, all right? And make sure you have a comb in hand for that as well. And you do this after you pick the beard out, guys, all right? And after that, I'm grabbing the one guard and I have it, I have it closed, right? And then I went with the grain because I wanna keep the shade of this mustache relatively dark. Nothing crazy, uh, but you know, when you go with the grain, you take less hair off, so I did it that way. Um, now, you know, I switched to the Slimline Pros at this point for the mustache lineup. Uh, this is when my Slimlines were still hitting at this point now in my career. Those things are in the graveyard. Um, Slimlines, unfortunately, aren't made well. After a few after a few months, those things are no good. The the life of that motor starts dwindling and you just, you have to upgrade. And that's why, you know, most of us end up going with the skeletons, the babbler skeletons. And they hit, but they, they can sometimes be a little bit bulky. And, you know, that's why I appreciate smaller trimmers like the slim lines. But, yo, when those red ones come out, I might have to cop two of those. I might have to cop two of those because I know they're going to be hard to find at times. For a few months at least. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get those guys. Um, right now, though, I'm still continuing to, you know, use these slim lines. And I don't know. I feel like uh, this... The, you know, flipping the trimmers over to line up the top. I think back then I was doing it more. Now I don't really flip them over. I just go straight. I hold them like I would for a regular hairline lineup, you know, and, and I just go right above the specific area that I need to cover for the mustache. Now you only do this if you know how to get the angle right. You know, it's a little difficult when you don't know where you're going, what area you want to cover. That's why most people do flip it over. But once you know what areas you need to cover with the trimmers, just go straight for it. You don't need to flip it over. Sometimes you can even have an accident and push the person's mustache down, potentially take the person's eyebrow off. I did that before. We'll get into that one day. Not today, but I did take somebody's eyebrow off and it wasn't too long ago. guys now when it comes to the beard i like to wipe the skin off after i use some shave gel I, i'm using the 245 shave gel on this service and it's a good way of making sure that you the moment you use a little bit of tension with your thumb it's not gonna slip so always have that towel handy ready to go i always place it on the shoulder of my client and i wipe the residue of whatever's coming off with the blade on the towel and i'm back to it okay oh and again like everything else have that comb ready to go I, I like having a fine tooth comb. Uh, this one, uh, this one, one of my OGs just put me on. I forgot the name brand. I'm so horrible at remembering these name brands. I'm gonna do better, guys. I'm gonna do better. I'm gonna do better while you guys do better. And make sure you swipe that like button just like I'm swiping the residue shave gel off of his face. Swipe it twice, swipe it three times, and make sure that after you swipe it, you wipe your hands clean with the towel. All right, let's keep going. We got the mustache to cover, guys. Let's go. <laughs> getting closer to the end and I did a lot of detail work I cleaned things up but the mistake I made is that I tried to clean up the neck taper after I took the cape off now do not do this if you have any detail work to do towards the end make sure the cape is still completely on otherwise all that hair is gonna get on them
I think this was a good service. I think that it, it turned out very well besides the freaking hair on the back. What can I say? I mean, I mean, we all make our mistakes, guys. But other than that, I hope you guys ended up liking this video. Smash the like button if you haven't yet. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Until then, I'll see you next time. Me fui.